So last session, we stopped here and we are trying to do multi-person 2D pose estimation. And what is the idea? Let's break the problem apart because the problem seems to be too big at first sight or too complicated because these uh, multi people or multiple persons in an image can occlude each other. And you don't know whose joint it is or whose part that is. Maybe the problem is too complex to work with. Let's break it apart. Let's assume that you have a neural network that takes as input an image and is gonna output two things for us. One is the part confidence maps and the other one is part affinity fields. So our neural network is outputting two things. It takes as input an image and it's outputting two different maps and fields. The first set of maps corresponds to the parts. Let's detect all the heads of people in the image. Let's detect all of the right shoulders. Let's detect all of the left shoulders. And it doesn't matter whose left shoulder it is or whose right shoulder it is for now. Let's just detect all of them. And in each channel of the output, you have a heat map. And that heat map is emphasizing on all of the heads or on all of the right shoulders. But now you need to know whose right shoulder or whose left shoulder that is. Does it belong to the man or does it belong to the woman in this picture? There is another thing that your neural network is outputting. It is outputting a field or a bunch of fields, a set of fields. And it's trying to tell you, it's trying to help you that it is more likely that this shoulder is connected to this left elbow. So that's what your neural network is trying to do. It's trying to the part affinity field, these vectors are trying to help you associate parts together and identify limbs. The other one is trying to identify all of the heads, all of the shoulders, everything, regardless of the person. Now, it's a matter of training that neural network. That's one question that we need to answer. What type of loss function we need to use? What is going to be the ground truth for supervising this neural network? So those two questions we need to answer then you need to do the training so that your neural network is doing the correct thing, where each image is outputting the correct uh, part confidence maps and part affinity fields. For instance, there is no arrow from the uh, left shoulder of this person to the left elbow of another person. So we need to make sure that your neural network is doing the correct thing. But let's assume for now that your neural network is trained. Then there is gonna be a post-processing step on these two outputs trying to associate shoulder of the right person to the elbow of the correct person. What does it mean? For this left shoulder, there are two possibilities, or maybe even more, that this shoulder is associated with this elbow or this other elbow. This shoulder is associated, could be associated with this elbow or the other elbow. Now this part affinity field, assuming that it is correctly trained, is gonna make this association more likely. And that's how you're gonna use it as a post-processing step. If this is more likely, that is less likely, then you can identify the correct associations and parse your results. So now what is left is actually training this, what is gonna be your ground truth and what is gonna be your loss function. So last session, we designed our neural network. It's gonna have multiple stages and you're doing supervision per each stage. But other than that, every single stage is similar to the previous stage. So there is nothing special there. And each stage is outputting two things. One is the part confidence map, the other one is part affinity fields. Now you write down your loss function, which is in the form of mean squared error compared to the ground truth. So S corresponds to these maps, confidence maps, L corresponds to these part affinity fields. Everything in this loss function we know, some of them are because maybe two people are occluding each other and there is basically no annotation for that particular part because that part is missing for that image. So that shouldn't contribute to your loss. So we can set that to zero. So it's a weighted sum of squares. And sometimes your weight is zero because sometimes your annotation is missing. And then you are doing supervision per every single stage. So these are your losses that you have and you can have multiple of them. So far, so good. So everything in these losses we know, 
except for the ground truth. What is going to be your ground truth to train your neural network in the first place? Let's try to do that today. Uh, let's say, forget about that first line for a second, that's going to give you a ground truth to work with. In your data set, you know the person ID. You know this is person one, you know that's person two. Or you can have multiple other people, maybe 10 or more people in your image. So K is going to count that. And then you're going to pair each pixel in the image. You're going to know, is this a joint or no? Is this a key point or no? And you know the ground truth. You know that the key point, maybe J corresponds to the left shoulder of this person, X, J, K. K is the person, J is the shoulder, is the part ID. X is the location, but then it's going to be a point. It's going to be a pixel in your entire image. That's your data. You need to smooth it out. And how do you smooth it? You're going to use a Gaussian smoothing. This is whenever P is exactly equal to X, this is going to be zero. Exponential of zero is one. So you're at maximum one. And then you gradually and exponentially fast, according to this sigma, you're going to go to zero. That's your ground truth for the confidence map for a person. And as I mentioned, this is your actual ground truth in your data, which are vectors in terms of pixel locations. But then you're going to turn them into uh, heat maps or confidence maps. But what can happen in a particular pixel, there could be multiple joints, maybe the key point of person one and key point of person two, because these two people could occlude each other. So at each pixel, there could be multiple people that are overlapping. So you just take a maximum and that's going to give you the maximum value. And that's how you're detecting all of the shoulders. This is the ground truth to supervise this outcome of your neural network, the part confidence map. And that's how you're supervising it. What else? How do you supervise these part affinity fields? I'm going to use this figure to help me. So don't worry about it yet. Here you are taking the maximum. Over there, you're going to do averaging of the ground truth per every single person. And NCP is the number of non-zero vectors at a particular point. Because if you pick a point here, maybe pick a point on this shoulder, there is not going to be any vector in your ground truth from person two. But there could be other people in the image. So at each point, many of the vectors could be zero. And some of them might exist from your ground truth. What else? Now let's take a look at this limb. So this is a limb. It is connecting the elbow to the wrist. J1 corresponds to the elbow. J2 corresponds to the wrist. This is person K. These locations we know. These are from our ground truth. We also know that there is a connection here. That's a limb. That's also a ground truth in our data. And there's going to be a vector along that path. Now you pick a pixel and you want to label it. You want to associate to it a vector. If that pixel is on the limb connecting this joint to the other joint, you just use this V as your ground truth. Otherwise, it's just zero. But how do you know if a pixel is on the limb? You cannot be too strict. Otherwise, the same way that you couldn't be too strict with your confidence maps, otherwise these would be Dirac deltas. The same way is here. You need to be relaxed a little bit. Many of the pixels, could be on this joint, could have the same V, provided that they are not longer than the joint length. So if you take that P, project it onto this other vector, it shouldn't be longer than this joint length. And that's what you're enforcing here. It shouldn't be too long. And at the same time, it shouldn't be or too long in the other direction. So it should be within this box that you're defining, or actually within this box. Otherwise, that P doesn't belong to that joint and you need to set it to be zero, the corresponding vector. And then you average them out over your people that are actually contributing to that pixel because not many people are going to contrib contribute. And that's how you get the ground truth and that's how you're going to supervise your neural network and do your training using this loss. What else? We are not done yet. Now your neural network is trained. Now you need to match different shoulders to different elbows of different people. Let's say you have two candidate part locations, maybe this shoulder and this elbow. These are two candidates. 
and this shoulder and this elbow are another candidate. So you pick a pair of candidates, that's just DJ1, DJ2. You put a line between them. So it's a convex combination of these two points. And then you're gonna associate a confidence. How confident are you that this is actually a limb, that these two joints are connected? You're gonna do a line integral. You're integrating over U. It means that you're averaging along the path between these two joints of the direction. And this is exactly the unit vector that you had here. This is this V. This is the location of part two minus the location of part one divided by its norm. It's going to give you a unit vector. And that's how you are going to know how associated these two joints are together. So you're going to have a higher score here, a lower score here. So this is more likely. You keep that, you drop that, you drop the other one. And you can parse really complex scenes like the ones that you're seeing here. Any questions about this? Was everything clear? Okay, perfect.